What is the first step a phlebotomist should take before performing venipuncture? A. Insert the needle into the vein. B. Apply the tourniquet. C. Identify and verify the patient's information. D. Clean the puncture site. Answer. C. Patient identification is the most important step to avoid errors and ensure the correct specimen is collected. Which vein is most commonly used for venipuncture? A. Cephalic vein. B. Basilic vein. C. Median cubital vein. D. Radial vein. Answer. C. The median cubital vein is preferred due to its size, accessibility, and lower risk of nerve damage. How long should a tourniquet be applied before drawing blood? A. 30 seconds. B. 1 minute. C. 3 minutes. D. 5 minutes. Answer. B. A tourniquet should not be left on for more than 1 minute to prevent hemoconcentration and inaccurate test results. If a tourniquet is left on for too long, what can occur? A. Increased blood flow. B. Hemoconcentration. C. Hypotension. D. Lower hemoglobin levels. Answer. B. Prolonged tourniquet use can cause hemoconcentration, leading to inaccurate lab results due to trapped blood components. Which antiseptic is most commonly used to clean a venipuncture site? A. Iodine. B. 70% isopropyl alcohol. C. Hydrogen peroxide. D. Chlorhexidine. Answer. B. 70% isopropyl alcohol is the standard antiseptic for most venipunctures, except for blood cultures, where chlorhexidine or iodine is preferred. What is the correct angle for needle insertion during venipuncture? A. 10 to 15 degrees. B. 15 to 30 degrees. C. 30 to 45 degrees. D. 45 to 60 degrees. Answer. B. The recommended angle for venipuncture is 15 to 30 degrees, ensuring proper vein access without causing excessive damage. What should a phlebotomist do if a vein collapses during venipuncture? A. Pull the needle out and apply pressure. B. Probe for the vein. C. Use the same needle for another attempt. D. Continue drawing blood despite difficulty. Answer. A. If a vein collapses, stop the procedure, remove the needle, and apply pressure before considering another attempt in a different site. What is the most common cause of hemolysis during blood collection? A. Using a small gauge needle. B. Leaving the tourniquet on too long. C. Inverting tube slowly. D. Allowing blood to clot before mixing. Answer. A. Small gauge needles can damage red blood cells, leading to hemolysis, which may cause inaccurate test results. If a patient faints during venipuncture, the phlebotomist should A. Continue the procedure quickly. B. Stop the procedure and protect the patient from injury. C. Call a doctor immediately. D. Ignore the patient's reaction. Answer. B. If a patient faints, the phlebotomist must stop immediately and ensure their safety to prevent injuries. What is the recommended method for anchoring a vein? A. Stretching the skin downward. B. Tapping the vein lightly. C. Using a second tourniquet. D. Squeezing the vein. Answer. A. Stretching the skin downward stabilizes the vein, reducing movement and making puncture easier. Why should the bevel of the needle face upward during venipuncture? A. To minimize pain and tissue damage. B. To increase bleeding. C. To speed up blood collection. D. To prevent clotting. Answer. A. The bevel should always face upward to ensure a smooth puncture with minimal discomfort and reduce tissue trauma. When should a phlebotomist remove the tourniquet? A. Before withdrawing the needle. B. After withdrawing the needle. C. Before inserting the needle. D. After labeling the tube. Answer. A. 
the tourniquet should be removed before withdrawing the needle to prevent hematoma formation. If blood flow stops suddenly during venipuncture, what is the best action? A. Remove the needle and try another site. B. Adjust the needle position slightly. C. Push the needle deeper. D. Use excessive suction to force blood flow. Answer, B. Slight adjustments may restore blood flow, but if unsuccessful, a new site should be chosen. Which needle gauge is commonly used for adult venipuncture? A. 16G B. 21G C. 23G D. 25G Answer, B. 21G needles are the standard for adult venipuncture, balancing comfort and proper blood flow. How should a phlebotomist mix blood in a collection tube? A. Shake the tube vigorously. B. Gently invert the tube. C. Stir the blood with a needle. D. Let the blood settle naturally. Answer, B. Gently inverting the tube prevents clotting or hemolysis, ensuring an accurate sample. What is the purpose of order of draw? A. To improve speed. B. To reduce test errors caused by contamination. C. To prevent clotting. D. To maximize blood flow. Answer, B. The order of draw prevents contamination between additives, ensuring accurate test results. What should be done if a patient experiences severe pain during venipuncture? A. Continue drawing blood. B. Stop immediately and assess. C. Ask the patient to tolerate it. D. Ignore the complaint. Answer, B. Pain may indicate nerve involvement or vein damage, requiring an immediate stop. What is the best alternative vein if the median cubital vein is unavailable? A. Basilic vein. B. Radial vein. C. Cephalic vein. D. Jugular vein. Answer. C. The cephalic vein is the next best option after the median cubital due to its accessibility. What should a phlebotomist do if an artery is accidentally punctured? A. Continue as normal. B. Remove the needle and apply firm pressure. C. Ignore the situation. D. Keep drawing blood. Answer, B. Arterial punctures require immediate pressure for 5 to 10 minutes to prevent excessive bleeding. What is the primary risk of drawing blood from the basilic vein? A. Low blood flow. B. Higher risk of nerve and artery injury. C. Increased patient discomfort. D. Difficulty in locating the vein. Answer, B. The basilic vein runs close to the brachial artery and median nerve, increasing the risk of nerve damage or accidental arterial puncture. What should a phlebotomist do if a patient refuses a blood draw? A. Proceed with the venipuncture anyway. B. Convince the patient aggressively. C. Respect the refusal and inform the healthcare provider. D. Ignore the patient's concerns. Answer, C. Patient consent is mandatory. If a patient refuses, the phlebotomist must document the refusal and notify the appropriate personnel. Why is it important to avoid probing with the needle during venipuncture? A. It improves blood flow. B. It increases the chance of hitting a deeper vein. C. It reduces bruising. D. It can cause tissue and nerve damage. Answer, D. Probing with a needle can cause tissue trauma, excessive pain, nerve damage, or hematoma formation, making the procedure unsafe. What should a phlebotomist do if blood collection tubes are filling slowly? A. Withdraw the needle slightly and check positioning. B. Shake the tube to increase suction. C. Remove the needle and immediately reinsert it. D. Press harder on the plunger. Answer, A. Slightly adjusting the needle position may restore blood flow, but forcefully pushing the plunger or reinserting the needle is unsafe. Which of the following is not a recommended post-venipuncture practice? A. Applying gentle pressure to the site. 
b. Instructing the patient to bend their arm. c. Using a clean cotton pad. d. Checking for excessive bleeding. Answer, b. Bending the arm can cause a hematoma by trapping blood, making gentle pressure without bending the correct approach. What is the purpose of palpating a vein before inserting the needle? a. To assess vein depth, size, and direction. b. To push blood into the vein. c. To locate the nearest artery. d. To numb the skin before puncture. Answer, a. Palpation helps locate a suitable vein, ensuring proper needle insertion, reducing the risk of multiple punctures, and improving patient comfort.